Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I've been asked multiple times about the potential long-term complications or side effects from the COVID-19 vaccines. Fair enough, that's a good question. Before we get started with my answer, I just want to quickly give a shout out to another video on the same topic by Dr. Susan Oliver. You can check it out right here. It's always good to have multiple sources of information instead of just one when making a decision yourself. So go check out Dr. Susan Oliver's video on her channel, Back to the Science, highly recommended. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I have several slides on this because I, I just want to address this point once and for all here. So doctor, you never answered questions regarding long-term potential issues of vaccines. He always referred only to the short-term issues that have occurred. So what exactly are the long-term potential issues of the vaccines? And also, how do we know there won't be any long-term issues because we don't have the vaccines around for that long yet? So what do we mean when we say long-term side effects? And I just want to break down that term for you so that we can be clear exactly what we're talking about. So the first thing that we can mean when we say long-term side effects is that a long-term side effect is a bad health consequence when somebody takes a drug or are exposed to a chemical substance on a regular basis for a long period of time, so months or years. So say you, you take an Advil every week or every day, each downward arrow is when you would take an Advil or take a medicine, and then you can see that as the years go by, you take the medicine on a very regular basis, and then after about six years or so, is what I have drawn here. After taking this medicine or this drug for uh, six years on a very regular basis, then suddenly something comes up and that would be a, a long-term side effect. So the first definition of long-term side effect is some bad outcome that you get after you take something regularly for a long period of time. And you can see that, of course, this does not apply to the vaccines because when you get your vaccine, you're not taking it on a regular basis. So the second thing that we might think about when we think about long-term side effects is basically the effects that are lingering after a short-term side effect. So long-term suffering from a side effect that happened in the short term, within six to eight weeks of vaccine administration. And that can happen if you got the mRNA vaccine at week zero, and unfortunately you got myocarditis. If you don't get prompt treatment for that, that can affect you for the rest of your life. So the thing there, of course, is to make sure you know what the signs and symptoms of myocarditis is, which is basically just chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, feeling dizzy, things like that that would make you go to the emergency room anyway to just get it treated because we know that myocarditis is treatable. So you can see that this, again, doesn't apply to our concept or our conception of long-term side effect after vaccines because this is actually a short-term side effect that we know already. So the third thing when we say long-term side effects, and what I think you guys are asking me is somebody initially being fine with no health consequences within eight weeks of vaccine administration. But then health issues arise months or years later, and we know that that health issue is definitely because of the vaccine. So on this graph here, what I've plotted out is week zero, you get your first dose, week four, you get your second dose, and then half a year, you get your third dose, and then six years on, you get a negative health consequence that we can for sure attribute to the vaccine. So I'm gonna explain now why number three is highly, highly unlikely. So why doesn't the third scenario happen? And in fact, if I was a betting person, I would bet that there are no long-term side effects of the vaccines. Because we know from medical history that no vaccine has been shown to have had a side effect past six to eight weeks after vaccine administration. But that's what I've been able to come up in my own research. If you find something, by all means, send a follow-up question. Let me know. Always happy to answer and, and to you know update my own knowledge. But to my own knowledge, no vaccine has been shown to have a side effect past six to eight weeks. And also based on my understanding of how this vaccine works in the body, we know that mRNA, it's a natural substance that we produce on a minute by minute basis. We're producing thousands of molecules of mRNA every minute, and it's broken down naturally in the body. So in the bloodstream, in the fluid surrounding the body cells, there's all these enzymes that are basically molecules that the body uses to break down other molecules that are no longer needed. That's why mRNA, even though we've been researching it for 20 years, we've only harnessed that technology now, is that only now have we been able to preserve the mRNA molecule in a stable enough form to be able to inject it and use it in a human body for a medical purpose without it breaking down on us. So we know that the mRNA uh, is, is naturally broken down, so the vaccine constituents won't last a long time. And we also know that whatever else is in the vaccine, the liver and the kidneys, are basically the natural filters in the bloodstream that filter out bad components from the blood and expel it from the body. 
There's significant scientific consensus if you look at people who know what they're talking about on this, that anything that's injected into you in terms of vaccine is not likely going to stay around in your body past two weeks, if that. And so you may be now asking about, you know, what, what are, why were there some examples of the vaccines in, in history that have been removed from the market? And what about, you know, shouldn't we be more careful? What about other drugs that were developed and that did have uh, bad long-term consequences for people like thalidomide? And so let's address each of those points there. So the polio vaccine is one of these vaccines that um, were not actually taken from the market, but it did have a, a long-term consequence. And I'll put it to you that it's actually number two. It's the second type of long-term consequence where the health issue happened within six to eight weeks after vaccine administration, and it just affected people for a long time. Because what happened, if, if you look at that uh, link, it describes what, what, what happened. So in April 1955, a massive vaccination effort in one part of the U.S. led to uh, 40,000 cases of polio and 200 kids being paralyzed. Now, why was that the case? Because this vaccine, it actually used an inactivated live virus. So they took live virus, they killed it, and then they injected it into people's bodies. And uh, unfortunately for that batch of vaccine that was produced, the inactivation process failed. So for about uh, 200,000 doses, people were basically getting live polio virus. And um, so that was super, super unfortunate. But what it did help us going forward was that it helped improve the regulation of vaccine research and vaccine production. And it also tells us that, look, this is what happens after we give a live virus or any sort of uh, weakened live virus might have this risk of activation and causing the disease that it's meant to protect us from. But we also know that what's in the mRNA vaccine against COVID, it's not the actual COVID virus. It's one small component of the virus that uh, is not live and it can't cause any disease. So if we're trying to compare the COVID vaccine to the polio vaccine here, we're really comparing apples to oranges here. We, we, we can't really compare the two because they're different types of vaccines and one has an inherent risk of causing disease while the other actually does not. So regarding the second issue of thalidomide, what is it? It's actually a morning sickness pill causing birth defects in people, uh, in, in babies, and, um, and it was removed from the market in the 1960s. And what a pregnant woman would do is they would take it once daily for weeks or months at a time. And so you can see that the, the long-term side effect of thalidomide was the way it is because of cause number one, taking a daily medicine, uh, taking any medicine on a regular basis for a long period of time. What the thalidomide case did for science is that it helped improve the regulation of testing of all drugs, including improved aftermarket monitoring of all the drugs and all the health technologies that we have, which is why we've been able to identify the uh, myocarditis. Even though they're so rare, we've been able to identify them as true side effects of the vaccines. We also know that the mRNA vaccine is administered three times not on a regular basis, not taken daily. And so again, this comparison does not apply to us. So my answer to the question of whether the COVID vaccine is gonna cause long-term side effects is very unlikely. And again, if I was betting on this, I would say there's, there's not gonna be any long-term side effects. So there we go. I hope that gives you some insight as to why long-term side effects from COVID-19 vaccinations are highly, highly unlikely. It's also worth keeping in mind, of course, that COVID-19 infection itself can have both devastating short and long-term consequences. Of course, you know that people can die of COVID, over 1 in 100 die of COVID, and people can get myocarditis from COVID-19 infection at rates far more frequent than from the COVID-19 vaccines. Finally, over 3 in 10 people report persistent and oftentimes disabling symptoms following COVID-19 infection. You might have heard of this referred to as long COVID or post-COVID syndrome. Since COVID started, I've written countless disability forms for my patients who have been afflicted by long COVID. It's a devastating condition that you do not want to get. So I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please give this video a like. And if you'd like to stay tuned for more videos about this topic, then you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you in the next video.